receiving. Last week I saw this water bottle downstairs. I said, whose water bottle is that? It's a football thing, which I love. And they're like, we can get you one. Next week it shows up. Thank you, Bob Kevin. Welcome to Terryville Congregational Church. What a beautiful week. I don't think I can remember my entire life living in Connecticut, which for me is 25, 24 years now. Um, a stretch this long with like this low humidity, sunshine, everything that we've had, absolutely gorgeous. So thankful for this time of year. Today almost feels like we're back in August. I mean, being from North Carolina, very happy with this weather. Very beautiful. We're glad you're here. We're come together to worship God, and we are thankful to be able to be together, to worship God, to have gratitude in our hearts, to seek a closer relationship with God, to go to God with our prayers, uh, prayers of thanksgiving, but also prayers of needs, concerns, uh, people that are on our hearts, situations that are on our hearts, and to take this time together to bow before God. We live in a world where the world would like to make you think that maybe you're God, or maybe your neighbor's God, or maybe the celebrity is God, or fill in the blank. But we are reminded that no human is God. Only God is God, and we as humans worship God and are thankful to have God in our lives. So I'll have Haiti introduce herself, and then we'll take announcements. Good morning. I'm Haiti Kelly. I'll be your leader here tonight. Um, I'm just overwhelmed that my family filing in in the first two rows, so I'm very happy to have my family here worshiping with us. Do you have any uh, announcements? We'll pass the microphone so we can hear one another if you have an announcement or a prayer request or celebration. Continue prayers for my brother Mark Tompkins. Unfortunately, he had another cardiac arrest on Friday. Um, he is amazingly and miraculously doing quite well. Uh, let's stay tuned. Yeah. It was a real scare, but you know, the power of prayer, thank God, he made it. Um, I don't know how long but, um, Mel and I do the collections that we can get. Uh, you know, we don't have the regular church envelopes and we don't have the right ones. If you're putting in a check in the envelope, that's fine. But if you're putting cash in it and you want it credited to your, your pledge and stuff, please put your name on it because we open up these envelopes and we just end up throwing it into the general fund. But you may be losing some of these uh, donations that they've already signed up for. So if you could uh, fill it out, you know, put your name on the envelope, that'd be great. Yeah, we used to have printed, this company would print up these envelopes for us, and uh, they don't do it anymore. So we, Tracy in our office was able to make some envelopes, but they don't have a place for your name unless you write your name. So uh, make sure you put your name on it, otherwise you won't get any credit. Yeah, I'm uh, Wagon, that's our reminder to support our local food pantry. Um, 
we had two deaths in the family in the last two weeks. Um, one was my husband's great uncle's uh, partner. They've been together 43 years of marriage. So that she's 94 years old, like that. And also, my uncle Danny passed last week. We pray for these kids. Um, we appreciate it. Yes. Lauren, okay. Anybody else have any? And now, oh, Roseanne's got one. Yes, just so everybody knows that on the 18th, my husband's going to turn 80 years old. <laughs> and I'm surprised he lived so long with me. <laughs> Today we invite you all to come downstairs. We have coffee hour and fellowship right downstairs below where we are now. And then after that, anybody that is interested in helping me with a little project, um, we are going to do some card writing uh, to some of our church folks that are shut-ins and things like that. And so we're going to meet in the chapel uh, after coffee hour. I'll ring the bell. Anybody that wants to walk down the hall uh, shouldn't take too long, but it'll be a great help to, to write out some cards together. At this time, let's continue in worship. Please join me in your bulletin in our unison call to worship, which comes from Psalm 19. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant Lord. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect one's own errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my rock and my life redeemer. And let us sing together in the Red Hymn Boulevard 227.
Gracious and loving God, we come before you this morning and we praise your name. We are so thankful for your love, for your presence in our lives, for your daily guidance. We are thankful that you have sent your son Jesus into the world to be our Savior. We are thankful that we have amazing gifts that come from you, like forgiveness and hope and family and friends and this church and this town. We are thankful that we have uh, first responders who help us. We are thankful that we have military men and women who help us. We are thankful for people that work in a variety of fields that make this world what it is, whether it's a doctor or a nurse, or maybe a teacher, or maybe a coach or a mentor. All of these people are, are our village. And with their support and their care, we're able to live our lives. Oftentimes, oh God, we rush about. We're very busy, and it seems like society just gets busier and busier. Help us to pause. Help us to think about how we're using our time. And help us to realize that all things are possible if we make the time for it. Oftentimes we might think we don't have time for that. But we get to make choices. And we are thankful that we get to be able to have choices that we can make. Help us to take the time to keep you as our priority. As we worship you today, fill us with your Holy Spirit and speak to us. We are all on this journey of life, and we are all seeking answers to life's tough questions. Speak to us. Remind us that we are not alone. You are with us. You will always be with us. Remind us that we have our family and our friends. We have coworkers, we have neighbors, we have people who care. And help us to think about people that may not know that. And help us then to reach out to those people and to let them know that we care. As we sing to them together today, oh God, as we hear scripture, as we pray, remind us of your love and also remind us of your call to be followers, to be servants, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And show us how to do this important work. Give us that daily guidance that in all things, your will be done. If we're hurting, embrace us. Remind us that you are the great comforter. And give us all a sense of renewal today. That we can worship you and we can go into our daily lives and we can follow Jesus Christ. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite the students to come forward and join me. Good morning. We have a special thing that we're going to do today that I'm going to tell you about in a few minutes. The first thing I want to do, though is let's go ahead and take our offering now because then afterwards you can help me with the um, special project we're going to do. Who wants to take a basket? Here. All right. All right. We need to go this way. Okay. And uh, leave one more. And you guys go meet outside. Two in the middle and two on the outside.
For gifts to us and for gifts to share. For all that makes life sweet and true. Dear God, we give our thanks to you. Amen. Okay, everybody can be seated. And we have a little surprise today. We, we love surprises in our church, and we have them from time to time. Am I doing all the talking, or is anybody in the family doing talking? I'm doing all the talking. We have a little surprise, right? Katie was wondering why all her family showed up today. Right, all of them. <laughs> we have a little surprise. Are you going to bring it up? Or? Okay. Let me tell. Let me tell the story first. First, let me say, if I got a tissue, this might be a crime. I'm still trying to prep Katie because I know she, she went on the mission trip, and I know she's a crime. Um, back in September of 2007, Hades' daughter, Kimberly, who was a very active member of our church, stop making, you're making me cry. <laughs> back in 2000, September of 2007, Hades' daughter, Kimberly, passed away unexpectedly. She was only 15 years old. And it's hard, it's still hard to this day. We have outside of our church a beautiful little tree that was planted in her memory. And there's a beautiful little plaque out there that has her name. You know, it describes how it's in uh, her memory. But over the years, that plaque has kind of become weathered and um, tarnished from, you know, being outside. So, you want to talk or do you want to? I don't know if I could. Well, let's... So what I've done is, I got in touch with the lady, there was a lady that made that for us, who lives up north in Maine, I think, uh, named Cindy Caymans. I got in touch with her, and she is going to help restore that one. Uh, but in the meantime, while that one's being restored, So, what I want to do is have the family come up here and all the kids, and we are going to bless this, and then we can uh, put it outside after church. Come on, students, stand up here. And gather around, and you can, <laughs> you can either place your hand on it or on the, on the shoulder of your neighbor, okay? And repeat after me, dear God, dear God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you so much for Kimberly. Please bless this plaque and her memory, and bless all of us, help us to continue her legacy of love, of church commitment, of family, and of living life to the fullest. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Everybody can be seated. And students, you can go to Sunday school. Have a good time.
something was up with both my son and walk in the door. <laughs> Don't read the lesson yet, because Paul's going to sing for us. Okay. <laughs> uh, I thought Jacob was going to stay at home. I mean, he's, he's leaving me all by myself.
27 through 38. Peter's Confession of Faith. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and, three day, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get, me, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your minds not on the divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if, anyone, if any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who want to lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes to the glory of the Father, of his Father with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. You are our strength, and you are our Redeemer. Amen. Does anyone have any humor? Life can be hard, and it's it's uh, important to be able to laugh a little, smile. He's a really bad guy. Okay. Okay. I gotta make sure I can read the right one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you heard? It's all about the delivery, right? Have you heard the new sport called? Quiet tennis. It's like normal tennis, but without the racket. <laughs> okay, someone told me, someone told me it's impossible to make a pun about vegetables. And I said, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> I was thinking a lot about Kimberly because uh, September 21st, which is coming up this week, was the day she passed, 2007. And um, I remember that time of year because my first son had just been born. Uh, like three weeks before. So here I have this newborn baby. She passes. This son is now a senior in high school. And it went just like that. And I can still though remember her so vividly. She was only 15. We were texting last night. I said, was she 13? And she reminded me, she's 15. I, I thought she was even younger because even at that young of an age, she was so active here. She was at every event, uh, definitely every church service. And she was always helping. She didn't just attend. She helped. She came, helped with Sundays, with anything that had to do with kids. She was always helping. She wanted to be involved. She wanted to be active. And she was very wise for her age. Very like mature and wise. She was like a, kind of like an old soul, I think, right? And we miss her so much. And I was thinking about this lesson today where Jesus is asking the disciples, who are people saying that I am? And they're like, well, some people say this, some people say that. And he goes, yeah, but who do you say that I am? And I think it's 2,000 years later after Jesus was on this earth. 
But it's still such an important question for all of us to ask ourselves. Who do we individually, who do you say that Jesus is? Now think about Kimberly, I think. She said it with her life. Sometimes we can say it with words. Sometimes we can say it with our actual life, how we're living. Sometimes we do both. But it's important to ask yourself that. Who is Jesus to me? We can all probably recite sort of the dictionary answer of who Jesus is. Well, he's this biblical character. He's, you know, he's in the Bible. He's God's son. Uh, he died on the cross. He's our savior. But to go deeper with it and say, not just give like sort of a dictionary answer, but to say personally, who is he to me? And why does that matter? It matters so much for us to be very mindful, very intentional about who Jesus is to us because I think from that reflection then comes how we'll live. In other words, if Jesus is not that important to you, then I guess you won't really live that way. But if he is important to us, and I think as people of faith we would agree that he is, then it should follow that we should live as if he's important to us. So to ask yourself, who is he to me? What does he mean to me? And I can tell you, like, for me personally, from the time I was a very young child, I think I talked a little bit about this last week, from the time I was a very young child, I just remember thinking, there's got to be more to all of this, this world than just this. Even as a child, I thought that. And so now that as I've grown up, I thought, what a blessing that God can put that even into a child's mind and heart. In other words, faith doesn't have to be overly, overly complicated. You don't have to go to divinity school for a million years. You don't have to read every book there's ever been written about faith. You can have a simple faith to just have the realization there's got to be more than just this. And if there is, then okay, I have faith that there's a God. Okay, I have this faith in God. Now how am I going to live my life? And so to ask yourself, what does that mean to you? For me, I remember as a very young boy thinking, I am so thankful that I have a God that would send his own son into the world? Who would do that? Who would send their own child knowing their child is going to have to die on the cross at age 33? I don't know anybody that would do that. And the fact that God did that, I remember I was only like four years old thinking, that is so amazing. What a depth of love our God has that our God would send his own son into the world that way. And if our God has that depth of love for me, that changes my whole life because that gives me all the hope in the world and gives me everything I could ever need. And at four years old, my parents got divorced. That was hard. Any, any major life transition for a child is hard. But I remember thinking, it's going to be okay because I have this great gift. I have a God who loves me so much, he would send his own son into the world to deal with this stuff that we deal with. And then to die at age 33? And I remember thinking, I'm going to be okay because of that. I am going to be okay. I have love in my heart from this God, from my family, my friends, my neighbors, my church. I'm going to be okay. But I also thought, i got to kind of live a certain way now that I have this knowledge. I can't just take this for granted. And I guess this is kind of my point to us today. Think about who Jesus is to you. And then do not take that for granted. How will you live your life in such a way where you're giving that answer every day in the way that you live? This is what Jesus means to me. This is how I'm going to live. And when I think about that, I think so much about Kimberly because here she was, 15 years old, and she was one of our most active church members. She was at everything. Not just attending, she was there helping, and she did it with joy. She didn't do it as a chore, she didn't do it as a uh, burden, she did it with great joy. She was always smiling and happy to be here and happy to be helping, and she had that maturity and that wisdom that was so beyond her years. And I remember thinking when she passed, not only is it sad that a young person's passed, it's sad we're losing such an active church person. I remember thinking that, like, oh, why do we have lose somebody that's such an active church person. And it is a reminder to us that she has set an example. 
And here it is this many years later. And look at the tight-knit family that's here. And by the way, this plan to do this today has been in the works since what? The mission trip? Mission trip? Yeah. Since the mission trip, which was late June, uh, Peggy said to me, was it in the van or I forget what it was in the van. That's right. Yes. That's right. She was sleeping, and she, I said, you know, that plaque out there is getting kind of tarnished. And she goes, well, I can take care of that. And uh, she went right on the internet and found one, and, and then I said, well, let me get in touch with Cindy, and then we'll get that one restored, too, because we don't want to take that one for granted. And Cindy, I talked to her, she was so happy, and uh, we can mail it to her, and, and you know, this she could take her time with her, which would be nice. Think about who Jesus is to you. He's your Savior. He is your uh, Messiah. He is the Son of God. He is the one that has given his life. And we get these amazing gifts because of that. The gift of having all hope. No matter how chaotic the world gets, I mean, we're in this major political season now. It, it's okay. Because we have the ultimate hope because of this Savior. We have these great gifts like forgiveness and grace and love. And no one can take that away. If Jesus has transformed your life, then how will you live every day to show that? To speak it, both with your mouth, but also with the way that you live. To not take for granted that cross. Every time I see that cross, I think to myself, that is so powerful that our God loves us that much. Now, let's not take it for granted. Let's live life to the fullest, life and early, and like so many others we've known that have blessed our lives. Every day is a gift. Every day is a day to proclaim in our living, in our speaking, in our everything that I believe in God, that Jesus has transformed my life, and I want to be a follower of Jesus. Amen. I'm just going to say something really quick about my daughter, if I may, uh, and about hope and faith. After she passed, when her mother and I were looking for our clothes to bring to the funeral home. My daughter, her bedroom was a disaster. She was a 15-year-old girl. And there was nothing me in the entire room. But her father opened up her door and right neatly folded on top of this t-shirt she had and said, I'm going someplace better. And when I did the same thing at my house and opened her door, she had a t-shirt folded very neatly that said, this girl knows God is in charge. So both of us felt like we got a message that it just keeps us going every day. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together in the blue book, number 29, Sweet Hour of Prayer.
home for such a beautiful stretch of weather that we've had here. The sunshine, the warmth, the beauty of your creation, opportunities hopefully to get outside and to breathe the fresh air and to know that you are good, to know that you love us, to be reminded of your hope that is always with us. This morning we have a lot of people and a lot of situations on our hearts. We've named a lot of them earlier and we want to lift them up to you now. Continue to be with Mark, be with Wayne, be with Heather's neighbors and Sam's family and the passings that they've had in their family and Lauren and be with the Wilbanks family members who are going through difficulties and we thank you for Eliana's birthday, Jim's birthday. All of us have our own prayers in our hearts this morning as well, oh God. We have people who we're thinking of, we have situations, we have our own personal needs. And we believe in you, we believe in the power of prayer. We place our trust in you. There's a lot of things happening in the world that we don't have the answers to. A lot of people might think they have the answers, but we know that we don't. And we want to let go and stop trying to control the things that we can't. And we want to place these things in your hands. We want to ask this morning that you remove our burdens, that you search our hearts and know what it is that we need, know what it is that we are praying for, and remind us to be patient. The life of faith is not instant gratification. Help us also to be persistent, to keep praying, to keep in relationship with you, to keep seeking you, to keep serving you. And we ask that you guide our lives. The world wants to pull us in so many different directions, and a lot of those directions, unfortunately, are unhealthy. We want to ask that you pull us in your direction. And we ask that you hear us now as we take some time to lift up our individual prayers, and we will do this with a moment of silence. We do trust in you, O oh God. We believe, we know in our hearts that you hear us, and we know that in your own way, and in your own time, you will respond. Hear us now, let us all join our voices together and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And let us respond to God's love in our lives now as we receive this morning's offering.
pray. Oh God, we take the time now to lift up these gifts to you. We ask that you bless them, that you multiply them, that they be used according to your will. We ask that these gifts will bring you service and will bring you glory. And we ask that you bless all of our lives today. Help us in the living of our lives to bring you service and to bring you glory. Help us to see you. Help us to look for you everywhere we go. To see your presence in our lives and to be thankful. And to want to be servants and followers of Jesus Christ. Help us in everything that we do to live our lives as an offering to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And let us sing together in the red hymnal number 272.